Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual college visit series. We appreciate you being here. We are very fortunate to have with us here today, Mr. Kyle Dobry with Richard Bland College of William and Mary. Um, Mr. Dobry is going to share some great information with us about um, Richard Bland and then also share, um, answer any questions that you all might have as well. Um, and feel free to put them in the chat throughout today if you do have questions or we can answer, answer them live. So with that, Mr. Dobry, I'm going to hand it right over to you to get us started. Thanks again for being here. Yeah, absolutely, Ms. Edwards. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, very happy to be here today with all of the Hanover County Schools. Uh, once again, we are Richard Bland College of the College of William & Mary, and my name is Kyle Dobry. I'm the lead admissions counselor for the college. Um, so I'm the guy that travels around and talks to our local Richmond area schools. I'm also the guy that reviews those applications on that back end. So I'll be sure to share my contact information with you all. If you all have any uh, questions, concerns, or comments about your application, things you need to clarify, uh, I'm your guy to reach out to, so I'm here for you all as a resource. So we are Virginia's only junior college. We're located about 30 minutes south of Richmond, about an hour west of William & Mary, which is our mother school. You heard that Richard Bland College of the College of William & Mary. We fall underneath that William & Mary governing body, but we operate as a two-year institution, somewhat similar to the community college system in that we offer two-year associate's degrees. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys a resource. If you guys are interested in Richard Bland and some of the different resource and some of the different programs that we have, you can go ahead and check out what we're looking at today, explore through it yourself uh, in a uh, and check it out yourself. But if you go to our website, rbc.edu, and then go to this admissions and aid tab, and then click down on this admissions quick guide, it's going to take you to what we're checking out here today. So I'm going to go ahead and open that quick guide for us. All righty. So uh, as you can see here, just giving you an idea, a snapshot of campus, what we are by the numbers, uh, you'll see this total student body uh, population right here, right around 2300. Um, that number is a little uh, misleading. That includes our distance learners and our dual enrollment population. There's about a thousand students total who are taking class physically on our campus, traditional freshmen and sophomores on our campus. So to give you that idea about our size, we are a very small institution, but being small allows us to do some really neat hands on things with our students. Our student to faculty ratio it's around 20 to 1 and our average class size this year is actually under 20 students per class so uh, you avoid that lecture hall style class uh, everything is very small right there at your fingertips uh, you can see us on the map i described where we were before about 30 minutes south of richmond about an hour west of william and mary's main campus uh, by the numbers our student population just give you that snapshot of what our student body looks like uh, we're about one third first generation college students meaning that one third of our students on our campus are the first in their families to go to college uh, with that in mind we have lots of great resources for our students first generation and alike and uh, who uh, to get that college experience and really get that your feet under you starting right away with our financial aid office all the way through graduation, we help our students really making sure that they have access to all the resources necessary to uh, be successful here at RBC. Uh, we are also a majority minority institution. Uh, about 60% of our students on our campus identify as such, and about 60% of our student body on campus is, is female as well. Uh, what we do for our students, are we focus on those, I mentioned those two-year associate's degrees. It's going to focus on those general education, math, lab science, social science, and English. Uh, those 100 and 200 level classes you're going to have to take no matter where you go or what you study if you are pursuing uh, one of those four-year bachelor's degrees. You see our seven different associates listed right here. Here. Um, in addition to those general educations, we'll also help you with your prerequisites. So if you know that there's a specific you know, program of study or something you're interested in, we can help you with one of our 35 guaranteed pathways to make sure you're on track to get there with junior status. We get asked all the time, do you offer this major, that major, or the other? You know, long story short, we'll, if it's offered here in the state of Virginia, we offer it and we can get you there with junior status in a cost efficient manner. Uh, one of the real big exceptions we've been noticing to this is actually our architecture programs here in the state. Um, Virginia Tech, UVA, some of our big architecture schools, they require uh, all four years at their institution, not their transfer two plus two. So, uh, you know, if it's not architecture, we've got it offered for you. Anything engineering, education, uh, all the different sciences, math, you name it, we've got it there for you. So once our students complete those associate's degrees, focusing on those general education requirements, they can then partner those with guaranteed transfer agreements to go really anywhere throughout the state um, and somewhat beyond it, but we can't guarantee that junior status beyond. The way the guaranteed transfer agreements work, and we have these with every public institution in the state and most privates, they say they're signed by the president of our college and our transfer institutions. They 
just say, you know, if you went to RBC, got this associate's degree while maintaining this GPA and taking this class, we've got a spot for you here at our school, no questions asked with a seamless transfer with junior status. So um, it's a little bit different than that traditional application process. It's more of a, you know, a, that literally a seamless transfer for you to get to that four year institution. So it's really what we do is that two years with us and then two years at that four year institution to leave with a bachelor's degree. Um, it is a little bit more cost efficient to come to Richard Bland for your first two years as opposed to starting off at that four year institution. Uh, you can see our in state rates for the year. This is our sticker price sitting at right around $18,000 for the year. And that's including everything tuition and fees, room and boards, books, everything we've thrown into that estimate there for our students. That $18,000 sticker price is before any sort of financial aid, scholarship, or any sort of financial assistance. 80% of our students receive some sort of assistance in that way, um, meaning only 20% of our students are actually paying that sticker price. Some of our more popular scholarship programs on campus, uh, talk about some of our merit scholarships, our Statesman Scholar Program, this is for Virginia residents with at least a 3.0 GPA coming out of high school. If you're a Virginia resident with at least a 3.0 GPA coming out of high school, we'll be able to cover anywhere from 20 to 50% of those out-of-pocket costs for you at RBC. If you have at least a 3.5 GPA coming out of high school, we'll be able to cover anywhere from 50 to 80% of those out-of-pocket costs at RBC. The other way that we sort of figure out where you are in that sliding scale is you have to submit your FAFSA. Once that FAFSA is submitted, we'll see that EFC or estimated family contribution. Uh, long story short, the smaller that that number is, the larger percentage of your out-of-pocket costs will be able to, uh, to cover for you should your GPA qualify you for the Statesman Scholar Program. We also have our Promise Scholars Program. This is specifically for our Pell-eligible Virginia residents interested in transferring to William & Mary. And I know that sounds like a lot of caveats, but if you think you qualify for this, I really encourage you to look into this. Um, this is a separate application, unlike our Statesman Scholar, which all of our committed students are evaluated for. But if you, if you um, are selected as one of our Promise Scholars, we'll be guaranteed to cover 80% of your out-of-pocket costs for your first two years at RBC and 100% of your out-of-pocket costs for those next two years at William and Mary. Uh, this is a really great program. We're graduating our first cohort right now from William and Mary. So they started uh, four years ago at RBC and are graduating now. Uh, it's really cool to see all the success that they're having as part of this Promise Scholars program. We also have over 60 institutional scholarships with uh, there's less of a GPA requirement here. This is more, uh, these are open for everyone. And these can be found on our website, rbc.edu underneath the financial aid tab. Uh, from there, it's one application to apply for all 60 institutional scholarships. So I've mentioned the sort of two plus two programs and the community college has a lot of those same two plus two programs. But one of the things that really separates us from the community college system, you know, other than that connection to William and Mary, which allows us to do some really neat co-enrollment, we share professors with them, uh, some professors with William and Mary is for the ability for our students to actually live on our campus and get that really uh, student feeling. Um, we have about 400 students that live on our campus. I'm going to go ahead and show you our dormitories right now. Um, they are some of the best, if not the best available for freshmen at public institutions here in the state of Virginia. We have Patriot and Freedom Halls. Uh, they are mirror images of each other. So what you see over there in Patriot Hall is exactly what you're going to see uh, in Freedom Hall. We've got these great community areas available for our students, but really the crown jewel of these apartments are what we're about to dive into. And I say apartments, not dorms, because they really are, they're, they're, they're apartments. They're not, they're really, they're dorms, but their apartment style. Uh, within each apartment, you've got four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a living room, a kitchen, washer, dryer, all there set up for you uh, in that suite style housing. What you're seeing right here is an eight person apartment. Right now we have all six person apartments on campus. They are physically the same, but instead of having four double bedrooms, we actually have two single bedrooms, meaning a third of our students on campus actually have single bedrooms, which is a you know, pretty awesome setup. Um, not many freshmen have the availability for uh, that single bedroom and a good number of ours actually do have uh, the chance to get that. And in addition to living on campus comes you know everything that comes with that clubs, organizations, sports, everything that you would find at your traditional small campuses. Uh, really the cool part about our clubs and organizations is we rely on our freshmen and our sophomores to really take those leadership positions and make sure that their interests are reflected on our campus. We don't have any juniors or seniors being a two-year school, just the freshmen and sophomores. So it's up to you all to make sure that your interests are reflected. Our student body controls the funding for everything that happens on our campus, student clubs, organization wise. So, you know, if they want to bring it to campus, it will be brought to campus. And an example I always use, you know, um, 
I don't know if y'all have heard of bubble soccer or seen that. It's like those hamster balls there uh, that students were in there bouncing all off of each other. So they wanted to have a bubble soccer league on campus a few years back, you know, and they funded it and helped them bring it there. So no matter how ridiculous, even if it is bubble soccer, they will help to make sure that those interests are reflected all throughout our campus. Um, sports wise, I mentioned that earlier, we have uh, sports that compete on the NJCAA division one level. Uh, on the men's side, we have basketball, baseball and soccer. And on the women's side, we have softball, volleyball and soccer as well. Um, being here on the admission side of the house, I can help get you into the school. But as far as getting on those teams, I can get you in touch with the coaches. But that's about it. The rest of it's up to the coaches and you to sort of um, see if you are a good fit, um, you know, send, send them tape and all that good stuff. Plenty of ways to follow us, stay up to, up to date with all the different happenings that we have going on on our campus. Um, my soapbox I always get on for all my students is, you know, no matter you know, where you're considering as you start to narrow down that college list, whether you're considering Richard Bland, William & Mary, your local community college or whatever it might be, you know, please get on that campus, try to get a feel for it and get that feeling in your stomach. I, I call it a student's intuition and there really is quite a bit to that feeling you're going to get when you step foot on these campuses. Um, you're going to get a feeling of whether or not you're comfortable and this investment you're making in yourself needs to be in a place where you're comfortable. And the only way to really know that is to get on those campuses. So uh, that's my, I'll get off of it, right? I'll get off my soapbox right here, but that's my, I really implore you all, please uh, get on these campuses, check out these campuses and see if it feels right for you. Uh, with that in mind, you can schedule a time to visit us, to call us and sort of get that, see if it does feel right for you. You can check out uh, our campus virtually and follow us on all of our different social medias, email our different departments to ask your questions and stay up to date with what we have going on. Uh, on I want to let everyone know about our November 6th uh, Pecan Festival and Open House. This is a great chance to um, you know, see if RBC is a good fit for you, if it feels right for you. On November 6th from 10 until noon, a great opportunity to come down, uh, visit our campus, get a, get a feel for our classrooms, get a, meet with professors, meet with current students, and like I said, see if it feels right for you. We'll also have the ability for students to partake in on-site admissions during this event. So We'll have free applications available. Students can apply, bring a copy of their transcript, and then right there on site, we'll be able to let you know whether or not you got in or if we're looking for some more information or wherever it might be. Um, the students that participate in this event are eligible to receive one of 20 different $500 scholarships we are giving away to students who are coming here and checking out this Pecan Festival and really getting the feel for campus. So that's from 10 to noon is sort of that business portion. And then from noon until four, we'll have a, a, this nice Pecan Festival, a party in our grove. Uh, you might see virtually represented behind me that Pecan Festival, that Pecan Grove. Uh, we sit on Virginia's oldest and largest Pecan Grove. So it's a great time that we have every year, sort of like our homecoming event, lots of different vendors, alumni, uh, bands coming out and playing. It really is a great time available for our students in Perspective students alike. Uh, our application, I mentioned uh, you can apply right now. Our application is open and available to, to students. If you go through our website, rbc.edu, and then you look over here in this top right-hand corner, you'll see this little apply now slider. This will take you right to our institutional application. It's fairly streamlined, just three pages. Usually takes students a maximum of 15 minutes to complete. And once that's submitted and, and that uh, this application right here is actually free of charge right now. We are also on the Common App. The Common App, however, will be a $35 application processing fee uh, for the students who choose to go through uh, the Common App. So either the Common App for convenience's sake, if you're interested in applying, or uh, we have this application right here available for our students as well. Uh, what we look for, generally speaking, coming out of high school uh, is a 2.5 GPA. That is our preferred GPA coming out of high school is at 2.5. And like I mentioned er earlier, we started evaluating for merit scholars at the 3.0 GPA coming out of high school. Completely test optional, meaning we do not require any sort of SAT or ACT scores. If you do have them, I really encourage you to include them. However, however because it will only help your application, it will not hurt it. We've never denied anyone because of an application, because of a test score. However, we have taken a second look at an application because of uh, those test scores. Um, students who are below that preferred GPA mark of a 2.5, um, just let you know our, our drop dead, the lowest GPA that we are able to work with is a 2.0. However, if you're in between that 2.0 and 2.5 range, that's when we're really going to start, you know, peeling back those layers to really try to identify that academic potential to see if it's there. Um, we want to provide as many opportunities for our students as possible because we believe our resources and Richard Bland is a great opportunity for all students to really, you know, get their, get that feel, get that college feel, get their feet under them and transfer. And we've seen lots of success for all 
all types of students coming to RBC. Um, however, we don't want to set anyone up for failure. So we really want to make sure we can identify some academic potential there and really make sure we're setting you up to be successful at RBC. So if you are below that 2, uh, that two five mark between that 2.0 and 2.5, we'll be asking for things like letters of recommendation, uh, maybe a personal statement. Um, we'll be diving a little bit deeper into that transcript. Why are you below that preferred GPA mark? Is it because of a bad freshman sophomore year? We can probably deal with that. But if it's because of a bad junior senior year, that's going to be more of a red flag for us because that's a better indicator of college success. Is it because of math and English classes? That's going to be a red flag for us. But if it's because of you know, uh, driver's education and physical education, you know, we're going to look at that a little bit differently. So um, just a little bit of a behind the curtain of our application process. Uh, Ms. Edwards, I can open things up now here for, for questions. Uh, if you have anything for me, you know, the questions that you see uh, students this year uh, really needing answered that I did not uh, get, get the chance to cover. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're muted, sorry. Thank you. No questions right now, but I just wanna say um, this information is so helpful for students, for parents, for school counselors. You know, I've um, worked in school counseling for 13 years and, and heard so many wonderful things about Rich, Richard Bland College of William and Mary. And it just for us to learn this information and to know all these opportunities that you all have for students, the, the living arrangements, um, the scholarships, the uh, you know, your partnerships with other colleges throughout the state and beyond. I mean, you guys offer so much. And I just, I want to tell everybody about you and what you do, because I just think you're, um, it's really a tremendous opportunity for our students. So I thank you for kind of walking us through all of this again. And I really want to go to the Pecan Festival on top of it. Come on down. It's a great time. They've got all sorts of neat pecan treats, uh, all sorts of goodies. I don't know if you got a sweet tooth, but there's some good stuff down there for Definitely sure. Definitely do. Definitely right. do. Um, but no, just truly thank you for your time today. And would it be best from here on out if we have specific questions, should we reach out to you directly, Mr. Dobry? Yeah, please. I dropped my email there in the chat. That's the best way to okay. get a hold of me, especially this fall. I, you know, I am bouncing around to different schools, but okay. um, you know, I, I'll get back to those emails within a couple of days. If you, um, my contact information is also on our website, rbc.edu, under our admissions tab, if you need to call me. Uh, you know, when I'm not on the road, I am in the office, but that's um, a little later in the year usually. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks for visiting with us, and I'm certain that we will be in touch. Um, and uh, just appreciate your time today and, and for coming and, and doing this. So thank you. Yep. And thank you very much. You have a great rest of your day. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for our college visit series. We will um, be in touch and have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.